In this video we are going to talk about dividend stocks with a yield over 5%. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. These days, the average large company stock yields about 2%. However, many stocks pay a lot more, up to 5% in some cases, and deliver the possibility of both income and small price increases. We looked for companies with the financial clout to sustain their dividends, as well as good prospects to grow revenue and profits, since a high yield can mean serious problems with a business. None of these businesses are fast growing, and a few are experiencing revenue declines in the near future. However, their dividends seem to be secure, and we like their long-term business prospects. Keep in mind that our six picks include international firms with stock exchanges in the United States, as well as real estate investment trusts, rights, and master limited partnerships, MLPs. The currency risk associated with foreign stocks is linked to their markets in Europe or elsewhere. Interest rates affect rights and MLPs, and they will suffer if rates rise sharply. MLPs also issue complicated K-1 forms rather than standard 1099s, which can be a pain to deal with come tax time. Before you invest, talk to a tax advisor. The choices are listed alphabetically. Both yields and prices are current as of June 29th. Price earnings ratios are determined using projected earnings for the next 12 months unless otherwise stated. Number 1. Blackstone Mortgage Trust. Blackstone Mortgage Trust is a real estate lending firm that makes loans and buys debt provided by commercial property owners. Despite the fact that the company went public in 2013, Blackstone Group, BX, the world's largest private equity real estate firm with more than $340 billion under management, owns and runs a portion of it. For those looking for a way to supplement their income, Blackstone Mortgage appears to be a viable option. It is expected to pay out at least 90% of taxable profits to shareholders as a real estate investment trust, making it a major dividend payer. In addition, its $9.3 billion loan portfolio includes a mix of high-quality commercial properties in North America and Europe, ranging from New York City's Woolworth Building to London's Aldwych House. Furthermore, the majority of Blackstone's loans are due to mature in less than five years. This reduces the probability of default. It also reduces the risk of the loans losing value if interest rates rise. Indeed, higher short-term rates will help Blackstone, as three-quarters of its assets are floating rate loans, which adjust higher as short-term rates rise. While the Federal Reserve appears to be planning to keep short-term rates on hold for a few more months, several observers anticipate a gradual rise over the next year or two. If that happens, Blackstone's loan portfolio will earn more money from interest. Number 2. Cedar Fair. You'll ascend 305 feet on the Intimidator 305 roller coaster before plunging at an 85 degree angle and reaching speeds of up to 90 miles per hour. It's probably best to eat lunch before boarding. The coaster, which is one of the most popular attractions at the King's Dominion theme park near Richmond, Virginia, is popular with children. Cedar Fair is also a desirable stock because of rides like the Intimidator 305. The company operates King's Dominion and 10 other amusement parks in states like Ohio, California, and Pennsylvania, as well as a large theme park outside of Toronto called Canada's Wonderland. Cedar also owns and operates five hotels and three amusement parks. These amusement parks aren't nearly as large or well-known as Disneyland. They do, however, generate revenue. This year's revenue is expected to reach $1.3 billion, up from $973 million in 2010. Cedar Fair pays generous cash dividends as an MLP, with an estimated $3.30 per unit, equivalent to a share, this year. These payouts have more than doubled since 2012, and they're expected to continue that as the company expands its parks and adds high-tech attractions including virtual reality roller coasters and rides based on iconic video game characters. Since theme parks usually have high fixed costs that do not rise as profits grow, modest price increases can have a significant effect on Cedar's profit margins. Number 3. Enterprise Product Partners. The energy industry's midstream MLPs, which service pipelines, processing plants, and storage terminals, were shaken by falling oil prices. Enterprise Product Partners, one of the biggest midstream MLPs, wasn't spared from the slowdown with sales falling from $48 billion in 2014 to $27 billion in 2015. 
sales are expected to drop to $23.5 billion in 2016, according to analysts. Enterprises' sales, on the other hand, are likely to take a new upward trajectory. Oil prices have risen sharply from their lows earlier this year, assisting in the stabilization of domestic demand. Enterprise has also made significant investments in new revenue sources. By the end of 2017, the company hopes to have $7.8 billion worth of new pipelines, storage terminals, and manufacturing plants operational. Those assets should allow it to produce enough income to keep and raise its dividends for several years. Enterprise's financial stability is also convincing. The company has one of the best credit scores for midstream MLPs, and it isn't obligated to pay any incentive distribution privileges, which are fees that many MLPs owe to their general partners and minimize cash available to common unit holders. Enterprise still keeps more cash earnings than most MLPs, and it's raised its dividend for 47 straight years, including a 5.3% boost in April, bringing it to 39.5 cents per unit. Number 4. LaSalle Hotel Properties. These days, hotel rights like LaSalle Hotel Properties are up against a wall of concern. This business cycle's business and leisure travel spending could have peaked and is about to begin a long decline. In the long run, that competition from home rental sites like Airbnb poses a challenge to conventional hotel occupancy and sales. Despite this, LaSalle's stock, which has dropped 29% in the last year, appears to be a good long-term investment. The Wright operates 47 luxury hotels in New York, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C., as well as resorts in Key West, Florida, and Del Mar, Calif. Airbnb is unlikely to attract a significant number of travelers away from these establishments. Over the last two years, LaSalle has upgraded guest rooms at more than a dozen hotels, increasing revenues per available room, a main hotel Wright metric. Indeed, according to Credit Suisse, RevPAR increased by 2% in the first quarter and will increase by 2.8% for the entire calendar year 2016. LaSalle also seems to be financially sound. It has a manageable amount of debt relative to adjusted profits on its balance sheet. Over the last decade, LaSalle's return on invested capital, a measure of profitability, has consistently outperformed the industry average, topping 8% in 2015. Furthermore, higher interest rates shouldn't pose a danger to LaSalle in the short term since the majority of its debt isn't due until 2019. Number 5. National Cinemedia. When you go to the movies, you'll almost certainly see a first-look pre-show that features a combination of national and local commercials, as well as trailers for new films. Advertisers will see such pre-shows on more than 20,000 screens around the United States, thanks to National Cinemedia. The company also offers three-dimensional ads. According to the Cinema Advertising Council, an industry trade association, cinema ad sales are steadily rising, topping $700 million in 2015, a 13.4% rise over 2014. In an increasingly fractured media environment, advertisers are turning to movie screens to attract viewers. The end result for national cinemedia is likely to be steady sales growth. According to Wall Street, the company will generate $468 million in sales in 2016, up from $394 million in 2014. The biggest threat to national is that as more people watch movies on big screens at home, theater attendance is declining. However, movie theater chains are actively combating this development by investing in emerging technology such as digital and 3D projection. Since they own a majority of national and take a share of its profits, the movie studios still want to keep it afloat and profitable. National Cinemedia is also attempting to increase revenue. After the firm's unsuccessful merger with rival cinema advertisement chain ScreenVision due to antitrust issues, a new CEO, Andrew England, took over in January. England, a former Miller Coors marketing executive, hopes to increase sales by pitching cinema ads at the annual Upfronts in New York City, where TV networks sell new shows to advertisers. What are your thoughts on our video? What is your experience with dividend investments? Please let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to hear from me again, please subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thank you for watching us.